ice cream truck analogy. I'm the ice cream truck driver, and the nice thing about ice cream trucks is that, well, I'm being facetious now by saying nice. They just give you one ice cream, you know. There's your ice cream. There's your, there's your ration for today. There's your ice cream ration, okay? Just bear with me with this picture, all right? So the ice cream truck is coming, and Elbron is a little kid, and dee nee 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 yeah. Hello there, Elbron. I want ice cream. Ah! Sure, which one? Which one would you like? Oh, I want them all. Uh, you can't only have one. Yeah, oh. take a chocolate. Uh. Off you go. Bye bye. Enjoy your ice cream. Ding, ding, ding. Now, was he excited about that ice cream? Yeah, he was. He was excited about going. Hey, and he probably he might even have enjoyed it. We don't know. It doesn't matter. But did you see how excited he was for the ice cream? Now, imagine this. Come back, Elbron. And I mean, and that's good. Ice cream is good. Just wonderful. It was like a child. He responded. It's beautiful. Responded. Keyword, yeah. Right. Now, imagine I create a huge castle of ice cream. Okay? Like this. It's dripping with all different flavors and everything. And it's all for free. And you can have as much as you like. And I say, Albright, come get it. Ice cream. Yeah. Eating, 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 eating. Yeah, let's not do the first. In Christ we... <laughs> All right, thank you. Sit down. Now, practically speaking, here, just let's just have a look at the word response. Which one would make you more excited? The mountain, people. You know, you're, you're excited with the, with the ice cream truck, but you are ecstatic beyond ecstatic. There are no words to describe... Your excitement for the ice cream castle. You can maybe describe it to a certain extent for the ice cream truck. Look, I was so jubilant. I was so ecstatic. I was so (laughs) violently emotional about it all. But this, you can't even describe the emotion. You are beyond words. You are like, ah! (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Thanks, once is enough. So, here's the thing. Ice cream truck is how worship and praise was described in the Old Covenant. Okay? So, in the Old Covenant, you'll get a ration. God will be good to you. Okay, you're good. And, you, and you'll say, well, oh, praise me. You, you get excited. You're like, oh, praise God, you know. I've got my ice cream, my ration. But in the New Covenant in Christ, who has fulfilled absolutely everything and has given everything with unlimited disposal into our hands and deposited entirely into our spirits. The entire ice cream castle is ours. New covenant. What do you think praise and worship looks like there? There's no words to even describe it. Very few words can come even close to describing the response that we have in the new covenant. Okay? Okay. Which is why in the Bible, when you look at your, read your Bible, you see a lot of amazing words for praise that are so extravagant in the Old Covenant because they're describing what praise is like. Because those people did not have a natural response to praise. They had to be told, this is what praise is. Come on now, shout. Come on now, jump. Okay, spin around. You know, they had to be, a lot of it had to be told because they were under an Old Covenant of law with rations. In the New Covenant, you don't need to be told. It's an automatic response of the sons and daughters of God to this incredible gift of salvation. All that we need to do, all that the Old Testament needs to do is take away the veil, the, the veil, what is veiling you from seeing the face of the goodness of God. Because when you see that ice cream castle, people, you don't need to be tell someone they're going to spin around wildly. Get that? Does that help answer that question? Second of all, same question. Although I must just say the New Covenant does have some rich words where it describes it. But second one, slightly different way of thinking about it. Um, If I'm in prison and I have chains around my legs, I have chains around my legs, okay, and I'm in prison, and I'll praise God in 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 my chain. You're in the stocks, but you're still like, Yeshua, whatever they said in Hebrew, shum, shum, lam, 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 
no, no, no. You're praising God and you can still maybe jiggle a little and jiggle a little and it's wonderful. Now, suddenly, you set free from your chains. Do you think that you should now praise less? Less extravagantly, because now you've been set free from your chains, people. So when you were in the chains, you were like, hallelujah, hallelujah. But now you've been set free from your chains. So now, now that you've been set free, you better not, you better not praise as extravagantly. It's rubbish. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because there are some belief systems that say, you know, the, the words that you use to describe praise are predominantly from the Old Testament. It doesn't really cover that so much in the New Testament. And so therefore, we shouldn't be doing that. We should be praising in a reserved manner. It makes absolutely and utterly no sense. So what we need to do is we need to pull things through the cross of Jesus. And whatever is against the cross stays behind the cross. But whatever is for the cross just effortlessly passes through. don't even have to mention it. So, for example, before the cross, you had to pray prayers like this. Remember when Jesus walked on the earth, you must remember, he came, he was under the law when he was speaking. So you can't take what Jesus says and preach that as it's grace. That's not grace. Jesus was under the law. That new covenant actually was only in effect after he died.